welcome to Brim, welcome to Bergen County, or as I like to call it, Bill Clinton country. Yeah. Mr. President, these are your people, and they're fired up. Who's fired up? My friends, as President Bill Clinton would say, and he would nearly finish every speech the same way, he'd remind us that here in the greatest country in the world, our best days will always be ahead of us. So Mr. President, I won't take a long look back, but just for a quick minute, I want us to all remember many of the great things your administration got done. As President, you paid down the national debt. You protected Social Security and Medicare. You invested in infrastructure, science, and technology. Oh, and you had surpluses as far as the eye can see. You helped create 23 million new jobs, more new jobs than Reagan and Bush combined. The lowest unemployment rate in 30 years, the lowest poverty rate in 20 years. You cut taxes for the middle class. Crime was at a 25-year low with 100,000 new community police officers on the beat. Let's give it up for our officers. All well, the firefighters, the MPs, you always have the back, their backs. And you passed the assault weapons ban, which kept guns at the hands of 500,000 criminals. Mr. President, you made smart, hard choices to ensure America's growth, prosperity, and safety because it was always about both opportunity and responsibility. As I always have said, I am a proud Bill Clinton Democrat. Yeah. Pro-growth, pro-jobs, pro-business, pro-security, and yes, pro-common sense. Mr. President, you may have grown up in Arkansas, but you've always had some good Jersey values in you. So best of me today, like what you first confronted, this Tuesday's election is about the fight for affordability, for smart investments and fiscal responsibility, for lower taxes and lower prescription drug prices, for paying down the debt and investing in clean energy, for funding the police to fight crime and terror, and protecting our communities. All things that this Congress has accomplished the last two years, and don't ever forget about that. You taught us, sir, to always put country first. And at working across the aisle together, isn't a weakness, but a strength to be harnessed. And we've done that, and then some. Just in this Congress, we've gotten a bipartisan infrastructure bill passed, which will fix our roads, bridges, and build the gateway train tunnel. A bipartisan gun safety bill. A bipartisan bill on the terrorism. A bipartisan chicken manufacturing bill to stand up to China. And a bipartisan police funding bill to invest to protect. Because at the end of the day, being a Bill Clinton Democrat isn't about posturing or politicking. It's about getting things done and putting people first again. And that's what we've done. It's including taking on a key fight, doing everything we can to protect a woman's right to choose. The bottom line, while our best days are ahead of us, Democracy takes hard work, and Tuesday is another test for all of us. We need to be vigilant to protect battles already won, like the right to choose. And instead of putting country over party, the other side, they're putting the Oath Keepers and extremism over what's best for America, and we will not let them turn back the clock. We're in New Jersey, and they got another thing coming. We're about building a strong future. This Bill Clinton Democrat, and Democrats up and down the line know what's at stake. So you all are going to show up big on election day, are you? Yeah. We're going to get everybody we know out to vote. Because this election here in the fifth is about common sense problem solving versus their extremism. They've gone off the deep end. And we won't let extremists take over our state or our country. We will prevail because we got the grits, we got the guts, and we know that our children's futures are literally on the line. So Jersey, you ready to win? My friends, Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, because there are a few here, I'll never stop fighting for you. I'll never stop fighting for our Jersey values. And the best is yet to come. There is no better messenger for common sense and problem solving than my mentor, a great leader, 
the 42nd President of these United States, William Jefferson. Is, the problem is 
than the narco traffickers in South America. And the COVID collapse created an economic disaster in Latin America, particularly in Central America. And so they come through the weakest countries, the narco traffickers, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. Here's the law. The law is that if somebody shows up at our borders and they have a reasonable fear of their own safety for their families and their children, we take them in. If they want their piece of the American dream, we applaud them, but they have to wait like everybody else in line because we can only absorb so many people every year in an orderly fashion. So the obvious answer, and finally, finally, there's a bipartisan bill that the Republicans have not really pushed yet, because they want you to be neutral about it, which would do what makes sense, which is to quadruple the number of stations reviewing people coming across the border, keep them there, build enough space to keep them there, and decide the relatively small but still significant number of people who qualify under the law and tell the others, you need to get in line like everybody else. We are a nation of immigrants, but we're a nation of laws. And this kind of thing is going on everywhere. President Trump didn't want to do that. He made a lot of fuss about building a wall, but he never built something that would enable us to enforce our laws. Because he needs you to be angry and miserable. Because then you don't think very well. So, you, I mean, this is an off-year election. you got to vote for the party out of power. Inflation's too high. you got to vote for the party out of power. So here's what I want to say about that. Since President Biden took office, four big bills have passed. And Josh voted for all of them. You know I hate deficits. I gave you three surpluses in a row for the first time in more than 70 years. When the bottom drops out of the economy, as it did after the financial crash in 2008, and then it did after COVID, there is no economy if the government doesn't step in to help small businesses, to keep factories open, to help the restaurants, to help all those people that cannot make a living. There is no other alternative. And you try to wait, bring the economy back, and then when it comes back, then you can bring the deficit down, if you're responsible. Here's what those Republicans never tell you. Because of these four bills I'm about to mention, the deficit is going down more than a trillion dollars this year. And if we can put three or four years together, that'll fix things. And that's what they don't want to happen. Because they need you miserable and mad. A great political philosopher, Aretha Franklin, <laughs> and maybe my favorite song she ever did, said, if you want to be free, you've got to think. <laughs> so, think. The rescue plan. Help businesses, factory workers, businesses small as well as large. They gave governments a ton of money, which they could have used, and many did, to support law enforcement. How many Republicans voted for that? Zero. Zero. Then Josh played a really large role in the infrastructure bill. Okay. Within six months, we had 4,300 projects going. minutes for every trip depending on where I'm going. But 
You have fewer flats, you get better mileage, it lowers your cost, and it creates a ton of jobs, and they're all good for them. So, he's right there where some Republicans voted for that. 13, 6%. And then, he helped pass the CHIPS bill. long delays in the supply chain. Hillary decided we had to redecorate our den. And I'm still waiting for the furniture. And I'm like all of them, I like the old guy stuff. I mean, but anyway, I went along with it. We're still waiting for the furniture. And why is that? Almost everything that's made in the world today requires computer chips. A lot of them are made in China. China is still locking their economy down. And they're not worried about it because they got a forced 40% savings rate that they can live on while the rest of the world's miserable and they think it'll increase their power in the long run. So what did America do? We adopted the CHIPS Act. And we're bringing that manufacturing home. And second, we get it quicker and the transportation costs are much cheaper. It's going to make a huge deal. How many Republicans voted for that? 24, 11% of their costs. And then there was the Inflation Reduction Act. Woo! Woo! What does that do? That caps seniors' out-of-pocket drug expenses at $2,000 a year. It caps insulin costs at $35 a month. And that's a huge <laughs> We all know practically that America is a huge deal. And we join every other advanced country in the world and allowing our government to bargain for lower prices of drugs bought at higher volume. <laughs> and it spends some money on climate change, but it's all job-related stuff. To put people to work making buildings more efficient. To put people to work providing cheaper, alternative, clean sources of energy. All of which will lower your electric bills. How many Republicans voted for that? Zero. And then their leader, Congressman McCarthy from California, <laughs> said, I want you to make me speaker. One thing I like about McCarthy is when 2020 the Republicans for the first time in the history of any political party had no platform. Their platform was bad mouth us. Right? They literally didn't think because they had a platform uh, in 2016 and people didn't believe him when Donald Trump said he would repeal the health care bill and when he broke his back crying and failed by one vote thanks to Senator John McCain. <laughs> but this time they do have a platform. The speaker has said repeatedly, I actually saw him on CNN the other night, out of his own mouth. Said, you, you may not have caused this inflation, but we are going to make you pay for it. Because our solution to inflation is to cut Social Security. Now remind me, under the current law, Social Security is about to give people an 8% cost of living increase, the biggest in 41 years to deal with inflation. Yeah! And, you know, this is not just about old people like me. This is about Social Security you spend about a third of its money on working families with children with disabilities or with severe problems. This is, and we pay for it. And they still want to cut it. And then their Senate campaign chairman, the senator from Florida, said, I got an even better idea. I said, I'll make it easy for you. We'll just abolish both programs every five years 
and then let them get reenacted. So if we have control of Congress, we'll just enact a shadow of the former program. And you say, oh, they'll never do that. <laughs> and that's what they said when Hillary told them they were going to repeal Roe v. Wade. Hillary said a few years, that's what's going to happen in 2016. And people laughed at her. In the media, they laughed at her. Oh, they'll never do that. Oh, yes, they will. Yep. And they think you're going to be so mad and so down that you either won't vote or you vote for them. Now, does this reflect the views of every Republican? No. That's why Josh keeps looking for people in the other party to agree with him so we can do things together. That's the morally right thing to do. It's the politically smart thing to do. We've got to get America back to a functioning political system. But you have to realize it is almost impossible to get somebody to do the right thing when all the rewards are for doing the wrong thing. That's true. And that's really what this whole thing's about. I mean, this country is still the best positioned country in the world for the next 20 or 30 years. But we can do anything here. You watch what's going to happen because of this. Chips Act. You look at all the places that will be better because of the infrastructure bill, which also gives, by the way, because we don't believe in sticking it to people when they stick it to us. It also gives affordable, rapid broadband to every small town and rural area. In And so the first thing I want to say is, in any other contest, we always say, well, how are the other guys doing, don't no. we? So uh, inflation re peaked out at about 8% here. The big headline just three days ago in the New York Times, it says in Europe, it's 10.7%, much higher. Inflation's higher, fuel's more expensive, taxes are higher, the unemployment rate's higher, the whole nine yards. A lot of it's caused by Putin's war in Ukraine. The only anti-inflationary measure McCarthy has proposed is not cutting Social Security and Medicare. That's going to drive up drug prices and make people miserable, but it won't do anything about inflation. He says, but I want to abandon Ukraine. Let's get back in bed with Russia and Iraq. I mean, Iran. It will destroy NATO, it will destroy our relationships around the world, it will destroy everything our country believes in. And we don't have to do it. There's money in this bill, this last bill put up a half a million charging stations for electric cars. It may seem unusual. I've got a friend who went to Georgetown with me and he lives up in Connecticut. But he was born in Latin America. And his main home and business is in the Dominican Republic. They were a lot further to go than we did. And in 2005, I started badgering him. That's a long time ago. To start going into solar and wind energy and geothermal and electric cars. And he is making a country fortune. All on clean energy in places that ought to be way behind us that are looping ahead because the Republicans don't want to do it. So we got a clear choice here. And Josh talked a little about gun safety. So I'm just pleading with you, don't leave any stone unturned. You've got at least one more highly competitive credit congressional race in this district. You know people in other states. You need to tell people this. The Republicans told, said, McCarthy said, 
months ago he was going to cut Social Security and Medicare and do all this stuff. And it's only now, yesterday I noticed, finally, we got a column, an article on the front page of the New York Times that said they were going to cut Medicare. So it's up to you now. But you can't stay home, and you can't stay quiet. And if people really want a country where both parties work together, you got to vote for Exhibit A here. the most bipartisan member of Congress. Woo! And, just, and I give an example. Every now and then, you know, as we said when I grew up in Arkansas, a blind hog finds an acre. The, the other day, they passed and was signed into law by the president a bill that was truly bipartisan that gives more funds to help small towns and communities hire, retain, and trained police officers. And it's a really good bill, and he was there. <laughs> if you want less of that, more of that, and less of this other stuff, you've got to vote for somebody that's on the level. And so, that's my pitch. It's straightforward, it's from the heart, I'm not screaming at anybody, I'm not calling anybody names, I'm just telling you what they're for and what we're for. We have got to stop rewarding deliberate, destructive, divisive misconduct. When we do, we can have... When we do, we can have an America we can share, and we can take problems as they are. Analyze them, explain them, and do what makes sense. And Josh has done a stunningly good job of that. Right? <laughs> Thank you. I'm proud of him, but I'm proud of you for voting for him. <laughs> there's still a chance that the anger will fade. The skies will clear, and enough people will think to give this election the turn it deserves. We have got to stand up against this. We can't let them take America down this dark path. And there is so much good. And don't forget, call your neighbors and tell them. Deficit's going down a trillion dollars this year. It's going down eight hundred billion dollars next year. We're growing like crazy. We've had ten million new jobs. And we're going to have more if we do the right thing and the smart thing, starting with sending Josh back to Congress. Thank you.